You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's WWE SmackDown After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's WWE SmackDown After Show. Seems like when I hear this music playing... the lights again? I, the lights are going, right? Yeah. yeah. That we're sitting here like three mugwumps. We should be dancing and doing stuff, you know? We should. We I do. Don't, I don't we know do. why you set me next to this guy. <laughs> Come on over here. I should. I'm kind of lonely. Yeah. And I'm not wearing underwear. Oh, <laughs> all right. I'm on my way. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to the SmackDown After Show. We're here to recap Friday Night SmackDown. I think there were like seven matches that night. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. There were uh, six. Many. There what were matters many. is I'm Rick Drayson and you're not. Yeah, that matters. And we have the, uh, should I say Schmegma Brothers here? Yeah. yeah the, the, the comedy team of Ketchum and Cheatham. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I like the purple on you. How come he didn't yeah. wear it? Yeah, he's, uh, I didn't get the memo. Yeah. Uh, well, you guys live together, don't you? Yeah, but he, he was in San Diego um, uh, proposing. No, I wasn't. <laughs> oh, Shana. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, I have a story about, about later about oh, yeah. that. Okay. So you put it on the air? Off the air, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, if you can't tell us apart, we're going to let um, uh, a, a, a new watcher slash listener, Lisa in Chicago, yeah. tell us apart. Who's Shannon and who's Shane? Yeah, she's going to do it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she could call up. Maybe we could call him the third one from our gym who looks just like you. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I swear to God, I've never seen anybody look more like you than you. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He's. Uh, I have to get a picture of him. I'm afraid uh, is, to approach him. Is he in him, good though. shape, at least? Yeah, he's in good shape. Is he, in good sh is he a good-looking guy? No. Okay, well, he looks <laughs> but, more like him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 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 well, all right, let's start this uh, ball rolling. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it started out with Kane and the Wyatt promo. Yeah. I, I love what they're doing with the Wyatt family. Family. What do you like about it? It's just, it's got that creepy eeriness to it. Mm -hmm. Backwoods. It's it's the horror story of WWE. And and every everything, I mean, you need comedy, you need drama, yeah. you need horror. And before they had horror. Kane providing it, but he was more of a comedian, kind of like a Freddy Krueger telling one-liners. It's not really that scary anymore. No, it's not scary at all. Yeah, but the, the way they're doing this Wyatt thing is, I think it's fantastic. You know what's scary about stuff like that? It's not what you see, it's what you don't see. Right. Yeah. And these three guys came out of Bakersfield. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> looks like it, doesn't it? I went to high school with them. <laughs> I knew where they lived down yeah. Rosedale Highway <laughs> in the back yeah. on the farm. Yeah, the back and, and they're all inbred. <laughs> their mom and dad is their brother and sister. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so when you have people like that, you know, they're dealing three of them with one brain. You yeah. Know, maybe not quite. It's like an X Files episode. So. It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. We should get Robert Patrick on there to <laughs> chase him down. Well, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, what they're doing with it, it is. Yeah. By the way, it's from San Jose, California. He always so. does that. Like anyone can't. Like any anyone cares. Like, where hey, it's so from. somebody like, is like, hey, I don't know where it's from this week, and then they're you know they're wondering at that exact moment. I just filled it. He, he's got. Well, it's one, not that exact moment because Friday's over. Right. That's the only note I have, Rick. So that's the only like note on it. there is from San Jose, <laughs> California. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it is from there. It was from there. Yeah. We're here now, so we've been there, done that, and we're gone. But we did yeah. go to San Jose once, you guys. Oh, so that's I right. Yeah, we did. We did show up there. Yeah, that was. Pretty crazy. Yes, we did. The we second knew the one way got to canceled. San Jose. Huh? We knew the way to San Jose. Yes, we did. And, and we, we worked out a gold gym, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And we well, had, he he didn't go. Oh, and we had dinner on the on the wharf of San Francisco. That's right. Yeah. With Shane getting a burger that tasted like fish. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a fish burger. <laughs> well, it was it was a burger made on a fish grill. Right. So it had the fish smell when it got on the burger, and he's just <laughs> disgusting. All right. So now um, that led into a match. Yeah. Well, Kane, Kane came out and. Uh, attacked, which was well done. He he actually slipped behind, and pulled one of the guys out. The guy that wears a mask. I'm not sure which Wyatt that is, yeah. but um, pulled him out and um, then like started handing them all their A's. And yeah. then uh, the numbers game kicked in, and the Wyatts uh, came back. I, I really like the way that uh, Bray Wyatt actually turned backwards and was looking backwards in the camera uh, angle. It looked really creepy. Down? Yeah, it looked yeah. like a uh, a scene from uh, um, Wrong Turn. 
Yeah. <laughs> or, or from um, third house on the left. Yeah. <laughs> Or don't possession. go into the woods. Yeah, yeah we could, <laughs> they're all the same movie. On. <laughs> yeah. They're all the same movie, the same people, right? Yeah, let's go backpacking in Ozark Mountain. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Deliverance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all the same movie. And that's where they got these guys. Have, these, have they been around before? Do you know? No, they were from developmental. I, I know Bray Wyatt is they're a Mike Rotundi They're son. from underdevelopmental. Yes, underdevelopmental. <laughs> Brody Lee is the other one, too. He, he came from Ring of Honor. He was one of the bigger guys. Which there. guy were we talking about? Uh, he's the guy with the uh, the beard, I believe. The well, they dark both hair. have well, beards. The dark-haired one, I believe that's okay. him. Okay, yeah. So. And the bald? Yeah. Who's he? The bald. I think he's from Australia. I heard. I'm I'm not really sure. I haven't actually researched them yet. Yeah. So this guy, he's a, he's a host. He's yeah. a, he's on the <laughs> panel here. He hasn't done. Well, his I'm asking for a reason because uh, back in the day, the wrestlers came from other territories, which yeah. we don't have now, obviously. And developmental uh, today, we know people who've been there for years in developmental yeah. have never had a match yet. Exactly. So these guys come out of somewhere. That how long have they been in there? How long did it take them to get a match? Because they they did something special with them. I'm sure for those two guys, <coughs> because of their size, probably not too long. They yeah, don't that's look what very I'm polished. At. Yeah, they, they look like maybe they've only got a couple of years under their belt, maybe two. Which 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 sometimes works. I'll tell yeah. you why. You want to know why? Why? I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because when you're too polished and things are too perfect, it looks too, too set, too pat. It's like this whole thing was worked out. When you're not that polished, but yet you're okay, it looks like anything could have happened, yeah. and it did, you know? And it makes it more interesting. Yeah, I, I love their, their entrance, too, when the lights go out, and he has the, um, the little lantern yep. and the rocking chair. Mm -hmm. it's, one of the best th it's one of the best things yeah. they've come up lately. Yeah. And, you know, it's like uh, I was going to talk about this later on the show, but... But it's, we don't have later. Yeah. <laughs> it's either now or never. I know. Uh, but the shield kind of ran its course. Like, I, I feel more like, like I, I don't know if it's just because they're new, but, like, to me, the shield is just, ah. But Taking when the, the backseat Wyatt, to it. Yeah, when the Wyatts come out, it's it's like they have your full attention. He's very good at promos, too. Right, the unless Bray they're going to put them against the shield. Yeah, yeah, one of them would have to turn face. Yeah. Probably the, the shield, probably. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying... Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this is a lot more interesting than the shield, yeah. for sure. And the shield's good. And th there's so much more you can do with yeah, this. Yeah, there's a lot. The shield is pretty much one dimensional, but yeah. um, uh, with this, I mean, you could go into backstories and, and you what could they're bringing their pregnant wives and sisters with babies, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, the mutants, and you know, like <laughs> kids with three legs. Reds, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they should. They but. should. Plus, it's a family. He has followers. Well, actually, no, he doesn't have followers. He just has brothers and sisters in the name of cause. Yeah. So, you know, they, they could always add to that. You know, people sure. bring up people from developmental. They have potluck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Super>. <laughs> I think that's where Trisha came from, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that one. Yeah, no. Okay, that, I shouldn't even no. said that. Okay. But she's not here to defend herself hey, can, anyway. So can we matter. rewind it? Oh, no, we're live. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Uh, all right, then we had Christian and Sandow. Yeah. Which I liked. Oh yeah, yeah, very, very good match. Yeah, Sandow's great. Yeah, they both are. I, they both are. Yeah. Here, now here's something that I noticed that Christian does that a lot of the new wrestlers coming up don't do, and this is because it's just how they're taught. They're yeah. told not to. But Christian wrestles for the crowd. Mm -hmm. He's always doing this. He's always involving them and asking them, inviting mm -hmm. them into the ring, mm -hmm. where everybody Imagine else. If they all got in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would, they would probably royal. explode. <laughs> yeah. Implode. Yeah. Which would be the correct term? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the new guys are taught just um, uh, after someone kicks out or you know in transition to grab a hold. Right. Well, I mean, Christian's from uh, you know a little ways back where he on he you get the crowd reaction in between and then you go to the next thing. I, I like that a lot better. Yeah. Because you're involved. You're involving the crowd. him, and that's what it's all about. Right. And he's still bumping really good, too. You see that uh, bump off that knee lift? No. On the outside? Uh, I didn't watch the show. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. The other thing I really liked about this match is there was no double down either. They just went right right into the comeback. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the finish was out of nowhere. You know, there doesn't always have to be a double down. Yeah. And so many people today, in the Indies especially, think, yeah. oh, i got to have the double down. Right. Put that in there now. Why? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so, overdone. Exactly. Especially if you only have like six or seven minutes. It's like yeah. that double down takes like 40 seconds to properly do. Yeah. yeah. Save it for the main event, like the, you know, the main event and the semi main. Yeah. Because yeah, if you, if every, the only bad thing is that if every match transitions into that and there's no double downs, it's just after a while everything will be the same because it's really hard to. Exactly. You know, for every match to, to have a different way to go in. Right. Uh, you know, to not having a double down and, and going right into a comeback. 
So. Notice how he could stretch something out that yeah. that like should have taken eight seconds to say. It's like that's why we go on. We go late. <laughs> Well, you no, guys thought it was me. Yeah, but you guys both it's do that. this guy. No, I, I don't have a lot of FaceTime, so I've got to stretch my stuff out. So he that just way, like to make, he makes a statement, then he just gives you a look like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is my look for approval, Rick. I'm I know going. it is. I know so it I'm is. waiting for you to go. I can't approve you. I'm not Shana. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh boy, I'm getting through that. It's right. like you know. Remember last summer when you uh, went and bought. Uh, uh, 40 rolls of film for that camera. He didn't even have a camera because his girl worked at Photomat. <laughs> yeah, right. He, he bought 40 rolls of film for the camera that was digital. <laughs> 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 Can I have 40 rolls of digital, please? <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the winner was Christian with a roll-up yeah. out of nowhere. Yep. Yeah. I love those finishes yeah. like that. Yeah. I, I love them. I love them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're because you don't expect them. Exactly. Yeah. No big finish. And it saves yeah. his, his finisher for if he does hit that finisher like in the uh, Pay per view, which is today. SummerSlam is today, yeah. right after That's this. That's why we have no audience right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We've got seven <laughs> listeners. I hear crickets. Yeah. <laughs> someone, uh, just, someone just slammed the door. I think yeah. they walked out on us. <laughs> and then Alberto Del Rio yeah. comes out right. and, and attacks um, Christian after the match. And Christian actually hits his finisher, the kill switch, on Alberto Del Rio. And right. this is like the third time he's gotten over on him. I know. So. What that leads me to believe going into the pay-per-view is that Alberto Del Rio will win this match. Yeah. My prediction. What's the prediction, Music? Steve? He's sleeping in there. Yeah. I walked out because I'm going to SummerSlam. <laughs> Dang it. See, they all left. I told you. Nobody's listening to us. We can do it. Let's put some porn on here. Just yeah. Make it hey, wrestling. Okay, send the redhead girl out here. <laughs> let, let us sit next to Rick. Who? The red-headed girl that's in there. Now, her freckles fell off of me last time. They're all over the table. Back here. to SmackDown, guys. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> okay. All right, so let's go to uh, RVD, Big yeah. Show, and Henry. Oh, you just ruined it. Why? Because <laughs> the interview was actually with RVD. Oh, but they all showed up. <laughs> yeah. And then um, who's the girl that's interviewing them? What's her name again? Oh, don't, I don't you know. write that down? Hey, no, what is I her name? I forget. The, the blonde? He, yeah, she I said it. I always forget her name. I, I forget it. I know it. Yeah. yeah. I, but I don't know it. All right, so go on. Okay. So then she asked him, are you worried about the rest of the shield coming in? And he said, mm, and he looks this way, and then he looks this way. He goes, nope. And then the camera pans back, and then you see the big show and yeah. Mark Henry. Mark Henry was sweating. He's like, always I sweating. I mean, it was dripping on the back of Rob. He's always sweating. <laughs> and then uh, big show looks like Ryback with that beard now. Do uh -huh. you notice that? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, here is my prediction. I predict that one of them will turn on uh, RVD in the um, in the. The match tonight. He's but 0 for 3 in his yeah, predictions, I think, by um, the way. Either Henry, or, and I think they'll end up joining the Shield because now they need something to bring the Shield back mm -hmm. up because they, they've kind of lost a little bit of steam. That makes sense. And um, also because Big Show was gone for a little while, now he just all of a sudden comes back mm -hmm. and they're friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I, I think he's going to turn. I he went to friendly turn. camp and came back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. That's my yeah. prediction. Okay. Is, uh, Whoa, we're, we're all over the place with yeah. these predictions. All right. Then we had the Divas. Yeah, we did. Did you like it? I like AJ. Do you? Yeah, I like I used to. I used to. Yeah. I mean, she's good. There's just, uh, I don't know, there's a lot going on there. A little, Natalia was carrying uh, Layla right up until the heat. You yeah. Know, it was like the whole, she was basically holding her hand through everything at the beginning. Yeah. But then once the heat started, then Layla started to take over a little bit. But the thing I noticed about that match is there was no energy or crowd reaction. You know, the crowd, no, there was nothing. They didn't invite the yeah. crowd in. You know, they just kind of went through the motions. Uh -huh, they yeah, didn't get the crowd involved. Even when they, they should have been, when uh, AJ had her in, in the uh, the sleeper and she, she was on her knees, the crowd wasn't getting into it. The crowd wasn't clapping. There's no. two instances like that where the crowd just did not get Why behind. do you think that is? Well, that's the difference between... Like Christian yeah. and and these girls, the way these girls were all trained, they're all siphoned through the system. So they're just they're, doing the job. they're not. Yeah, it's just like they're just wrestling for the TV audience. But the TV audience uh, uh, w can get into a match a lot more if the crowd is into the match sure. as well. You involve one, you involve a hundred. Exactly. Yeah. So um, they just they don't invite them in. They have what what I I call when I train people is tunnel vision. Where you're just looking and focusing exactly what's like right there in front of you, instead of you're wrestling for yourselves, so you're not wrestling for everybody that's watching. Yeah. You're thinking about what's next in the match, what's next, what's next. You're not thinking about okay, well, here's my chance now to go up to the turnbuckle and either get the crowd to cheer for me or get them to boo for me. You know, this is a, that that was missing in that match. Yeah. You can notice that in the hot tag too. Every time there's a hot tag, it doesn't matter 
what type of ta tag match it is. Two people need to look like they're ready to get mm -hmm. in there. You both want to get into the ring, they but they, they just had their hand out. They weren't yeah. going, come on, come on, come on. Like getting the crowd, you know, hitting the turnbuckle, getting them to back them up. They were just, especially Layla, she had to look like, like her hand was just there. They're sleeping on there. Yeah, yeah, she was <laughs> yeah. like leaning up against the ropes. You know, you gotta look ready. No matter what, you gotta look like you want to get in there and, and, yeah. and win that yeah. match. Yeah, this was like it was more of a story tag to where like the, the story behind it was that um caitlin she never got in until the end so she wanted to get her hands on both aj and um um uh what's layla. it uh who layla layla see that that's why i bring him <laughs> well there's so many of them i don't know who's who so like um uh, that was like the concept of it which was you know as as far as like whoever put that together i yeah. mean that's probably the story that they wanted to tell right as far as is them actually acting out and and like you know i mean you have a movie script and then you have actors that do it i mean the acting was okay yeah but it was just something we were told that i always remembered from one of the greatest uh tag teams ever midnight express is probably the greatest but it's the second greatest is a rock and roll express ricky mm -hmm. morton mm -hmm. and he says brother a lot so was, we said hey what kind of advice you know could you give us he's like brother when you're um in there it's not so important brother to see the people inside the ring brother but outside the ring those guys have to be hard working just as hard as the people inside yeah and it makes sense if you ever see a rock and roll express match Whenever they do the hot tag, the crowd goes absolutely ballistic. And that's because he's running up and down the apron like it's when the they're down. He's like, come on, come on. He wants to that get in the there. the anticipation yeah. of getting in there and doing right. something. Of course. There, was, there was none of that in this match. All the wrestling was good. I mean, the, the girls are all good wrestlers. Yeah. But as far as, like, just getting the audience to, uh, you know, erupt when that hot tag, they, they, like, they didn't do a good job at that because they didn't involve the crowd at all. It just, right. that, that's why, you know, you have to involve people if you want them to I come. do that in traffic. You know, <laughs> it's like I'm waiting for a red light. I try to get people around me to go with me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they kind of shuttle me across the street, you know, and then we all end up at the Starbucks together. I didn't so. think the finish saved that match, though. Yeah. I mean, with that one, you know, she uh, swept her leg. Yeah. And then uh, did the AJ did the Shining Wizard? I thought that that kind of saved it because they had a really good finish. They had a good finish. Yeah, a good finish will always save um, a mediocre match. And also save a That's bad date. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Whoa. She's not listening. <laughs> right there. She's Still not, not listening. listening. No, she's not listening. Um, I said a good finish will save a bad date. <laughs> 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 okay, so then we had the Ryback promo. Yeah, he's, yeah. that guy's so huge, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he's on creatine and um, he's taking a lot of creatine and, 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 and a lot of milk protein? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's like him. Like this guy's so old fashioned. He still takes that weeder protein that yeah. clumps up because he, he thinks he's and and he I mix it with the spoon. yeah and he puts like the entire egg take into the, the uh, blender. Take the litter box <laughs> stuff, the sand and pour yeah. it. That always clumps up. <laughs> you know, I, I like Ryback, and I, I guess I'm partial to him because he's a bodybuilder, uh -huh. and that's my roots as well, because I, I like to see a good bodybuilder in the ring lose something. You know, he's a big, powerful man, yeah. and he I think he's come a long way. I mean, I, I like him. Yeah, he, yeah. he well, uh, poor Drake Younger. Yeah. What, what, what has that guy ever done to him? Yeah. All he no, did was look looking at him. That was probably hit part of his <laughs> job was to look at him. But yeah, yeah, big props when I saw that I popped because yeah. I was like, hey, Drake Younger's getting yeah. some FaceTime on TV. Yeah, he's, oh, he he's a sure. Drake Younger is a, he's like a, a local well not local, but he was on the East Coast and he moved out here. Now he's up in like uh, Northern California. But yeah. he's very, 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 very humble person. Like one of the most humble people I know in the yeah, business. Talented too. Yeah, very talented lot. and su such a nice guy and a very hard worker. I mean we were doing that hood slam show up in Oakland. He came back and he was like dripping sweat and he just had shorts on. I was like, "Did you wrestle already? The show hasn't even started yet." And he's like, "No, no, no. I went for a run." So I was like, "Well, that's you know." Wow. Yeah, he's. <laughs> well, everybody else was um, smoking. Um, Maybe he had the runs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's, well, leafy um, green I don't really substance. know him, but I know of him. I know who he is. Okay. So now we had yeah. uh, match number four. Which was the, the shield. shield. Shield versus RVD, the yeah. big show. It's a big show. <laughs> and um, Mark Henry, sweat, big sweaty Mark Henry. Yeah. <laughs> that guy sweats in the shower. He's a sponge. <laughs> yeah. He's a wet sponge. <laughs> what did you think of that match? Uh, I like. I, I thought it was. I thought it was good. Well done. Well put together. Yeah, I, started I, off I, a little slow. I thought. Yeah. You know, they the pacing at the beginning was a little slow. 
I, I will say that Ro Roman Reigns selling has gotten a lot better when when he took that kick from mm -hmm. RVD when they mm -hmm. when they went into the hot tag, mm -hmm. the way he he sold it like you could look at his face and I, I always tell my students it's like people will focus on your face mm -hmm. like if you take something and you fall down your face is down in the mat you don't see it they can't see you they can't see if if you're hurting your or, response like, right. right. So he sat, tried to sit up, and he well, couldn't sit up, and he had that dazed look on his we face. We explain this in wrestling classes, as you know. You always tell your students, so let your face be seen. Don't yeah. look at the ground. Look at the audience. Let them read what's going on. And if you're out in public and just some Joe Blow falls on the street you and he falls face down, you roll him over to see in his face if he's okay. Yeah, exactly. And, that's yeah. The, and, and I'm being funny by it, but that's the truth. I mean, if he's not okay, you're going to see it in his face. But then after that, you check his wallet to see if he's got any uh, money. Well, he's turning over. I already have my hand on his wallet. <laughs> you know? So see how much he's got in there. But that's the same thing with wrestling. You have to sell through your, your expression. Now, the only other time that you don't do that is when you're wearing a hood. Yeah. And then you have to have yeah. your body work for you. Yeah. It's a whole you different thing. Again. Yeah, exactly. Unless you can cross one eye through the mask. <laughs> like mm -hmm. this guy. Okay. But, yeah, and uh, I like the, there was a lot of action after the hot tag. I, I like the, um, the action outside with everyone when, um, uh, was it Tyler Black, what's his name in the, um, no, it's, uh, what, sitting at, why do we even have this guy on the show? <laughs> he can't remember anything. Because you're attached to the hip. <laughs> I don't. The black-haired guy with the blonde, black and the blonde hair. What's I his never name? know his name. <laughs> the, the shield. It's Tyler Black, but uh, somebody what help about, us out what here. About, what about him? I want to yeah. know his name. Well, why does it matter? Because I forgot it. We'll look it up later. Some host we are. Yeah. So what, what about him? I smell meat cooking. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> that smells good. Uh, all right. So um, no, he he did a dive over the top rope onto Mark Henry when yeah, they, they that. were all doing all that on the outside. Now Mark Henry should be a better base. I mean, as, so for such a big guy, it's like right when they make contact, he falls because like he, he be... gets knocked over from the sweat sliding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably slipped on his be a own sweat. Base, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that smells. Can that? somebody call up and tell us who the uh, host, uh, who uh, who the guy it's is? Like pot roast in there. <laughs> it's a pot <laughs> luck. I can't even think anymore. <laughs> I know it does smell good. Yeah, all right, so it? the finish of that match was um, it was the, he uh, Big Fried Show hit him with the um, weapons of ma yeah. mass destruction, but he was kind of dazed, and then um, RVD actually tagged him, went to the top rope, and hit the yeah, five stars. Right. Yeah. Now so, something flash. that actually worked in that match that made made the Shield and everybody in there. Um, look really good and, and showed that the, the shield is actually really coming into their own as wrestlers and then the guys like um rvd and and big show who already have this is ring positioning yeah when they he got hit with the punch he the way he fell he positioned himself so he'd fall where he would be in perfect uh, uh position to take that frog splash so many people especially like on indie shows they'll fall and then i'll see them get up and turn <laughs> and like move like so that way like they're like scooting over yeah their exactly arms. <laughs> yeah, <I've seen> that. <laughs> so like ring they, all their ring positioning like they were always where they needed to be when they needed <clears throat> to be there and that, that's we, very we important. We were talking about this yesterday in my class that some of you won't realize and when you're teaching them in the ring that there's a lot that goes into putting a match together. It's not just jumping off the top rope like a, a lot of wannabe wrestlers who call and say, "Gee, I want to be a superstar. I, can, I got my finishing move off the top rope." All that stuff you're talking about, ring positioning, selling, working the you know, the face, working mm -hmm. the crowd. There's a lot going on out there. You know, it's just like when you play in a rock band, you guys play. Well, you know, not you, him. No, not I him. I watch. Yeah, but you're playing. Yeah. There's more than just picking those notes. Right. You know, there's a lot to it, and it has to work with everybody in the, at the chemistry. So that's when you get a good match, when you have somebody who knows what they're doing, where they know but themselves, for sure. Right. Am, am I mean to him? I no. just want to know. I'm not too mean to him. Right? <clears throat> I mean, you're, you're a lot meaner to him than I am. I don't like him. Oh, I don't like him either. Okay. <laughs> See you later, Shane. Yeah. Okay. Can we get a new host in here? All right. <laughs> All right, so then let's go on to uh, Miz, your yes, buddy. Yes, Miz. We trained the Miz. Yes, you did. Yes. But we didn't train Jack Swagger. No, uh, am I, like, just that far out of it? When, when did Cesaro start coming out with them? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, he has, though. Cesaro, is he tall? No, yeah. not too. Sounds like maybe Swagger six, six, three, six one. He, he looks like not too sh shorter than uh, Swagger. Yeah, he's, he's probably 6'3". I didn't yeah. think he was 6'3". Yeah. I thought he was like 6, maybe 2, 6'1". He looks pretty tall yeah. next to, you know, next with him. Uh, how tall is Miz? Uh, like maybe just about six foot. I'd say like five eleven. Yeah, because they're both really uh, taller than him. Yeah, Swagger's huge. Yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah, uh, well, he looks intense when he's out there. I like him a lot. I think he's got so much potential. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do with him. I know they kind of um, didn't do anything with him because of that. Um, I think he had the DUI or the, some, some sort of 
thing he got outside that yeah. any time like wh- whether it's like college or pro sports or any time you do something that like embarrasses mm-hmm. uh, you the, know, the like company your, your, the company or the team that you're on uh, they'll punish you somehow and yeah. i think that's they they had kind of taken him out of the limelight for a while but may- maybe now they're just going to see if 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 it's strong enough, if if they still have the same heat, then you know, maybe he did have good happened. heat when yeah, he came he out. Right when they came out, the crowd, of course, was a boo. Yeah. So. Boy, it sure changed over the years, hasn't it? it was yeah. never like that. You just did your job and went there and you worked. No one ever j- followed you around to see what you were doing out <laughs> after hours. Right, I know. Yeah, if that was the case, no one would be working. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything you want to say about that match? Well, fast action has started off. You know, it's one of the good things is that they just they, you know they they went right at it right when the the bell rang. Yeah, I, I like. I mean, there's there, the match had no purpose being in there except for maybe that since the Miz is going to be the host of SummerSlam, they just wanted to put him up. Yeah. Uh, like I, I didn't see any storyline or no, anything. No, just to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, it was kind of predictable, too, because uh, you didn't think he would lose uh, leading into that being uh, that he was the host, you know. And I don't think Sh- uh, Swagger's even on the show. Is he on the pay per view? Uh, not that I know of. Hmm. Yeah. It's Unless cool. he does something pre show. But yeah. as far as I know, I don't think he's on it. So, yeah. I mean, why would they put him over the Miz, you know? It doesn't so, make sense, no. no. Yeah. Just I, I, like, I like the finish when the referee. <laughs> I always like when the referee Out. ejects him because everybody <laughs> actually pops on that one. It's like, you! And then he, like, you know. The second like baseball yeah. and the umpire gets kicked out and he starts kicking the, the that, dirt yeah. on their feet. That is the only part of baseball that is actually watchable. I mean, they should just have <laughs> clips or hi- like whenever there's a highlight of baseball, it's usually like the manager getting ejected. Yeah, yeah. But baseball, I, I mean, that's a cure for insomnia. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Seth Rollins is the guy. Seth Rollins, yeah. Seth Rollins. That's what I said. No, you didn't. Yeah, remember I said Seth Rollins and okay. you guys all said no. Remember that? It is Seth Rollins. Yeah, it is. Who's the other guy then? Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose. Yeah. So I get them Roman Reigns. Two of them mixed up. Roman yeah. Reigns, yeah. It's a good thing I'm on this show. And yeah, thank no, God no you know what things. you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next one. Curtis Axel versus... Um, uh, Already in the ring. <laughs> job, I mean, uh, Zack Ryder. I like Zack Ryder. Yeah, I know. He's he looks bigger, too. Yeah. yeah. He, he looks a little, little wider, like he hasn't been tanning either. Just so he put some size on. Yeah. It almost seems, too, like he's getting defeated. Like they're trying to do that on purpose to... To kind of bring him down a bit because he had <laughs> such a huge Twitter following and and now it's like like you know it's like his hair is not spiked up anymore he doesn't come out like as flamboyant as he did before why so I think they're just trying to bring him down a peg I don't know maybe he, he, he something did something upset, to yeah. to do to something wrong to somebody in the back and, and yeah, something had to happen yeah. for him to lose that push that quickly because he, he had a good you know when the crowd would woo 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 him when he came out I mean he had, he really had uh, yeah. he had the crowd with him yeah he, he had was, down yeah he, he was he was up there you know he's I mean, wrestling-wise, I don't think he was main event status yet. I mean, but he was definitely mid-card or uh, to upper mid-card. And, you know, he could go, but then all of a sudden, yeah, now you see him now, it's like he's, he's a no introduction, nothing. But he's good. He's yeah, good. Yeah, he can work. Yeah. yeah, he definitely can work. Yeah, I, I, he, I don't know what he did. Back in the territory days, he'd be a top guy. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah, too bad. Curtis Axel. Uh, what do you think of him? Uh, I like I like him because of who he is and and he resembles uh, Mr. Perfect a lot a lot of his mannerisms I I just wish and I I sound like a broken freaking record but I wish he would take the Mr. Perfect moniker or just the name of um, Kurt Henning instead of being Curtis Axel yeah Yeah. I know maybe grandpa you know I know but still I mean he could be uh, Curtis Axel Henning yeah, yeah, he could. Well, yeah. that'd be if he had a married name. That's his. This <laughs> <laughs> is maiden yeah, name. Hyphenate it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did notice that. That was the first time I saw arm drags all night. I, I always use Rick Grayson Smith. <laughs> 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 arm drags? Yeah, uh, you know, they, um, he was doing some yeah. pretty nice yeah. arm drags yeah. in the beginning. So yeah, in the beginning they did. I liked it. I thought yeah. it was a good match. I thought yeah. also a, a really good thing that that they did is they they, they had a really good example of um, Heyman's mentoring when he's yelling when he um, he ducked and uh, and uh, he he missed him like with a splash and he landed in the stomach and and he's like uh, go get him he said uh, he said it told him to capitalize that's right he goes capitalize on it capitalize and then all of a sudden he went after him and started you know taking over and it's a good way for them to to get over Heyman as as a mentor. Yeah. Because otherwise, sometimes you just like see him out coach. there, and you don't really know. 
his his role out, out there yeah. as far as like how does he mentor them? Is he just there? Is he a money guy? You know, what, what's the story with yeah, that guy? Story? What's he doing? You see him out there, and then people are like, oh, okay, yeah. And it's like because a male manager is kind of a lost art there. You know, I've had I don't know if you had this when you train people. People call and say, I just want to be a manager. I don't want to be a wrestler. Where can I go to train to be a manager? You can't. Matt, yeah, there's a. Well, you're managing like school. A store or something. Okay, you, <laughs> yeah, go, we'll you be got, assistant manager. You go to we'll Kmart, you can be a manager over there. But <laughs> a manager in wrestling, they're kind of a thing of the past. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can have an advisor or someone training you. And well, ballets, he used to be the assistant to the assistant manager at the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, free popcorn. <laughs> uh, ballets. Yeah. You don't even see many of those anymore. You see a couple. Yeah, that's true. Not really. It's not I mean, like it used to be. You, you see um, Summer Rae, which mm -hmm. actually was not on. She was not on SmackDown. That's one of the uh, right. low points of the evening. Was I? I didn't get my fix of Summer Rae. That's why they call her Summer Rae. Sometimes she's there. Sometimes she's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some are, some are over there. Some, some over are here. teeth. Yeah, some yeah. are teeth. You look back, they had Slick, Mr. Fuji. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, um, Bobby yeah, the Percy Brain. Percy Pringle. Heenan. Yeah, Heenan. yeah Bo Bobby Heenan. You know, so many of the managers there. I remember they Jim used to Cornette. do the, yeah, the vignettes of them, you know, him showing them doing push-ups and putting them through training and all yeah. sorts of things. And, and now it's like, since that is kind of a thing of the past, I thought it was a good way for them to... to to show you, you it know, like Heyman's, you know, he's got supposedly the top guys. It's almost like he's a. They actually referenced him to like Sp Scott Boras, I think, the uh, sport sports agent. Yeah, like that's what he is. Like he's a, he's got the top. Wasn't one named Slick? Slick. He, yeah, he was a, a manager before. Black yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looked like uh, uh, buckwheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He looked like Rudy from like Fat Albert. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. But that, and even Dallas Page was a, a manager. Yeah, yeah he was. Point, yeah. I remember that. He was sure. bigger than all of those wrestlers that he managed. <laughs> yeah, but he was good. Like remember the big swag? Yeah, of course. He was like he, six he, six. Uh, he managed us for a long you time. You know how he got in the business? You? Yep. Yeah, he he's he was a good guy. He actually yeah. did like when he was managing us. We 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 were doing very well. That was in the. When we were in uh, developmental, they were. Uh, I was running shows. And he wanted to be a manager, so I said, "Come be mine." And so then I was wrestling Shane, my brother, my yeah. son, my brother. Your brother. <laughs> brother. Brother. I have a brother named Shane. <laughs> brother. <laughs> yeah. And so Shane would beat him up, and they'd go back and forth. And we and, and Swag, I started him. And then he took off from there and just started doing stuff, and then doing radio and everything else. But he's a good guy. Yeah. Do you do you remember Slamming Stu? Slamming <laughs> Stu. I know the name. Who is that? Uh, he was like a manager. He came out, and we would whack him in the head with chairs. I think now he's got some sort of. Uh, uh, something wrong with his brain. We yeah. hit him with a chair probably 19 times. He left a bad impression on his mind. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to match seven. This was the, f the main the main event. event. No B DQ. B versus B. Yeah, I, I think that was a match six, but I'm I may be wrong. Well, how could it be match six? Okay, wait. Let's let's. I counted. I went through that two earlier today, and I I thought it was two, but I think I'm wrong. Okay, Sandow versus Christian, yeah, number one. Okay. No. Caitlin and, and no, Natalia. No. Kane versus the Wyatts was number one. <laughs> oh, you count that as a match? I count it well, as a match. Oh. It's kind of like a match. I guess. There was no bell ringing or a referee, though. That bell was ringing. Or finish. <laughs> 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 All right, though, that's not a match, so then we had six matches. <laughs> okay. I'm wondering, why did I have seven down here? Hey, did you know that? Um, <coughs> Brian... I switched to Lucha, that's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they show Lucha, and the guy's going to the top rope. He's going to do something like, you know, spectacular. And then they, they pan to the crowd, and the yeah. people blowing the horns. And then when they pan back, he's already done what he's. <laughs> I uh, like the watch. I like it. I get yeah, a kick out of it. It's a bit of a All three. I mean, what is that? I, I DVR actually... it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> what are the odds of, um, you know, two people. Um, getting a simultaneous pen. I know. You know the odds <laughs> yeah. of that. And what about three people getting a si simultaneous yeah. pen? It has no rhyme or reason. <laughs> and I can eat chocolate cake <laughs> and watch it go. <laughs> Every match in Lucha will have that at one point or another. <laughs> I know. What are the odds? I know. Yeah. And they mix the men with the women. They all look like men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Daniel Bryan's, um, his beard is... is um, is so prominent that yeah. it actually it shows up in X-rays. Yeah, it does. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. That thing's living in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that it, that was a decent match. I mean, Barrett. I just don't know about Barrett. I never have since the day he started, but they had a good match. Yeah. yeah. No. No DQ. It was a no, no DQ match. Mm -hmm. Um, da Dan O'Brien was really working the crowd too. He worked so hard. Yeah. He he is a, a phenomenal work. I, I think the way they train people, like, and they every every once in a while someone will come out of the fold. Somebody like. Uh, you know, Bell will try to keep you down and keep this person down, and he will just rise because of his talent and his mm -hmm. hard work. Uh, Daniel Bryan was, was one of those. Yeah. They never wanted him to make it. Uh, I remember someone telling me once that, uh, oh, it was, um, what's his name, Loki, who was Caval, told me that um, WWE told him when he was there, um, 
like th they said um you don't you don't look fierce you don't look like somebody who could you know really beat someone up and yet daniel bryan at the time was in las vegas he was teaching submissions in um in a, a shoot um in in an mma facility mm -hmm. and he was just like how, you know who else would be able to hurt someone if they really wanted to uh you know like a teacher of <clears throat> mma submissions he's like the WWE sometimes just drops the ball on things, and I think sometimes they drop the ball. But if it bounces high enough and and they, uh, you know, has a will, it'll. Uh, you know why they do that? Because they have too many chiefs, too, too many, many people, cooks in the too kitchen. many cooks in, in the kitchen, yeah. and no one wants to make a decision on what to do. If one person makes a decision and they don't like it, then they get fired. Right. But so no one, yeah, no one wants to really say you know they. And then when one thing works, they all say, "Yeah, we all." That was my idea. That was my idea. Yeah, he, he really, he mastered his style. Like, his, his, that's his niche. Like, what he's doing now and, like, the yes and the yes. And uh, he really, like... Look how, how nuts the crowd goes for that now. Everybody's doing that. You look when they show the crowd, they're all doing that. They've yes. got yes signs. Yes. Yeah, it's just, he's so over right now. Is that the most over guy? Well, the yes, 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 she did when I walked in the back door last night. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, yes, yes, yes. Well, that and then, like then when, she, uh, when she said... Um, are you taking me to uh, dinner tonight? You went, no, no, <laughs> no. No, I did take her to dinner. Oh, all right. I, I was a very nice boy. <laughs> Wasn't so, that? <laughs> uh, so during this match, then Mr. McMahon. Yeah. Oh, the walk. McMahon. Oh, yeah. my God, the walk. That, and the jacket. And that, that yeah. jacket. Didn't that look like a 70s like game oh show host God. jacket? He looked like a game show host. <laughs> yeah, didn't he? Now let's play The Price is Right by Vince <laughs> <Yeah>. McMahon. <laughs> oh, my God. What, one time we were... At the horse races, and our buddy had worked there, and they had this club inside, but you can't get inside without a jacket. So they have jackets there right. if you don't have one, right. and they all look like those game show jackets. <laughs> it so was red funny. and white plaid. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious. And um, he pulls, ends up a, a no DQ. The referee goes to um, to county, pulls the referee out. And the, right. the funny thing was, is the referee kind of bounced off of him, and then all of a sudden he's like knocked out yeah. from like For all that time. Yeah, he didn't even like hit the floor or anything. It was, <laughs> I was like, okay, it was really funny. Yeah, and then um, well, the match was really good leading up to that. I mean, basically it was McMahon saying, "I'm not going to let you be the champion. Right. I'm not. You, you know, I, I will stop you. Like, right. uh, you know, I I am." I am God here. That was like what he was trying to do. And then, um, uh, what's his? What, what's the referee? The other referee that came out. You wrote that down, right? Brad Max. Brad Max. Why can't I remember anything today? I don't know. I don't know. It happens to me all yeah, the time. It happens. <laughs> Old age, I think. Yeah. Brad Brad Maddox comes out, um, and uh, then Daniel Bryan kicks out of his um, bull bull uh, hammer elbow that Wade Barrett threw. So then he looks at Mr. McMahon like this, and they're like exactly. looking at each other. That was like a great like exchange right there. Exactly. They're just looking at each other like, "Well, wh what do we do now?" And um, yeah, it was it was um, it was funny. And That's then the best part of the yeah, match. Yeah. And then uh, Vince gets uh, he tries to pull the referee's shirt off, and he's having trouble. Then he pulls it off, and it's like inside out. So he goes to put it on, and then Triple H's music hits, and Triple H comes out with the referee shirt on, and then. Um, that leads to, well, the table, which was set up earlier. And that, that's what something is always done nicely, is when they set up a table and then they go, they, like, by the time you forget about it, they go into it. That's, that's when it's done correctly. A, a lot of the indie matches, they set up a table and they go right into it right, right. away. It's like, right. but that was well done. You almost forgot the table was there until yeah, you pushed them through it. And yeah. then, um, then Triple H counted three and... Um, Everybody's happy. Yeah, that was yeah. definitely done right. Right. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the fun stuff. It was very well, like it, because for 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 most, this is the last thing people were are seeing going into the pay per view. Right. It really pushed the John Cena, um, um, Dan O'Brien match at the pay per view. Right. Really, like for me, like I didn't write any notes <clears throat> um, for a while on this match because I started becoming a fan watching it, and that's always the greatest thing that we've always talked about. Well, where of course. And, you know, over the years, I, uh, everybody would make fun of Vince, and, you know, Vince gets involved here, and he shouldn't be doing this. And I was one of the guilty ones. Shouldn't be in the ring wrestling, but he was. Shouldn't be doing things he was being. Shouldn't make himself a superstar and a champion, and this thing, but he was. And then when you look back on it all, it was almost like watching uh, my three, the three, three Stooges, because <laughs> his little vignettes are really hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the hospital, you know, yeah, back yeah, in the day. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that stuff. And then coming out of that walk again to last, for Friday night, I mean, it's good stuff. 
and, yeah. and, and someday, years down the road, someone will look back on it and say, it was pretty genius, actually. Yeah. Because he's not afraid to laugh at himself. Right. And, and the guy's a multimillionaire, yeah. and he lets you know it. But he'll be a f he'll make a fool of himself, right? And that's good. Yeah. He he does whatever he has to do for the good of, of the, the business, company. Yeah. exactly. And that's what successful business owners do. That's well, right. It's like uh, before they had that Tuesday Night Titans. I don't know if you remember that show. Yeah, I do. They had that, and they had I think a Monday Night One. This is years and years ago. Where it was like a talk show, and he was like one of the hosts or the right. co-hosts, and he was really kind of boring, kind of plain and boring. He was in the beginning. Yeah, and then well, now that when he comes out and he has that persona, and you know, because that's what the whole thing you want. To see somebody put their his, their boss in their place, you exactly. Know? You well, know, but was, years ago, really he was doing commentating, yeah. and then he'd be in the hallway. And I think uh, one of the newscasters came out. They want to ask him about wrestling. He just gave him that look, like I'm not going to talk about this. I don't want to get involved, in, you know, whether it's real or not. And he was real skinny then, just a young kid yeah. back in those days. But he's come a long way. Look yeah. at him; he's done for the business. He's yeah. made it something big. But I enjoy it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good show. Yeah, and it's good. Good main event. Oh, and <laughs> Randy Orton came out to close the show yeah. with the briefcase. With the briefcase, and I mean that kind of tells you, like, you know, if Daniel Bryan wins, <coughs> is he going to cash in? Is Daniel Bryan going to win? It, right. it really left you clueless on who was going to win. I, I, it, it, Triple H could turn on Daniel Bryan, and that, that I think I'm going to. I have never been uh, wrong yet on, on predictions. You know, I, like I was, I'm, I'm like, what was I? Eight for eight. Well, is it on now? No, not yet. Starts in. No, now. starts in 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So overall, that's the show. Yeah. I, uh, are you asking how I thought about it overall? No, no. I mean, overall <laughs> it was good. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I really think SmackDown's picking it up. <coughs> I mean, I remember before we used to have a lot of negative things to say about it because I didn't think the product was that good. And it's like they're really picking their game up now. I think so, yeah, too. But really you also have really to remember that they always do leading into pay-per-view, especially the last yeah. show. Hey, come on, don't get before. negative on this. But if they do every show like that, they have a great show all the time. Yeah. Steve, can we have a few minutes to talk about something? You're good. Okay. Hi, Steve. All right, so if that's the show, that's the show. But I still want to talk about something else because this relates to WWE and wrestlers and people who watch <clears throat> us. And we've been around a long, long time in the business, a lot longer than anybody else who actually talks about wrestling. And there's those people, your viewers out here, who really want, sometimes, want to become a wrestler. You know, they call me, they call you, they call wrestling schools. They haven't got a clue where to go and what to do. They just don't know. What do you do to become a wrestler? And, and my advice is find a school near you, and then they'll say, there's no school near me. I'm in Indiana somewhere. All right, find an indie show near you. What's an indie show? Well, an indie yeah. show is an independent show run by a group of guys that run wrestling shows on Friday night in their local armory, right? Yes. Yeah. Or so, Saturday night. Or Saturday night or Sunday, whatever. Sunday and, and the best way for you to become one of those is to go down to one of those shows and go back and talk to the wrestlers and talk to the people from out and say, look, I want to get involved in this. Where do you train? How do I become a wrestler? What does it cost me to train? It's going to cost you money to train regardless. It's going to cost you money. So you no. better have a job and you better have transportation to get to and from class and don't miss classes because I get that a lot. Yeah. You you put on some freaking deodorant when you come to class, too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah get, spray those armpits because we don't want the nose stuck in there because that happens a lot, too. Oh, yeah. We had this one guy from India. Nobody even wanted to get in there. I don't know if he was allergic to deodorant or just didn't know about it. I had a guy from Australia visiting with his mom. You know where my patio is? And my ring's about 15 feet away? Yeah. You can smell his armpits 15 feet away. Wow. I swear. It was bad. And so I'll tell him, you know, it's hygiene and breath. You know, chew a mint or something. Yeah. No one wants to get face to face and smell you. And WWE actually is, is almost pushing independent shows in a way. How they keep saying, "Oh, you re you were in a bingo hall before." It's like that when the, just the fact them hey, mentioning. Wh when independent did they say that? Yeah, the, well, they always say they that. Said, with, uh, they said that like 2001. No, you're going back, you're going back with, over um, 10 years. Lesnar said it in his promo against uh, uh, CM Punk when he said, I won the belt, you were in, in bingo halls. You know, no. it's like they're kind of, in a way, just mentioning independent shows on WWE will get people curious to go yeah. out there and say, oh, I didn't even think there would be. Well, a lot of people don't area. realize that there are other shows other than WWE. Yeah, I exactly. mean, that's the national TV, sure. But there's still small shows every weekend in every little town. They yeah. have some sort of something going on, 20 people, 100 people, 200 people. The movie The Wrestler depicts it very, very yeah, well. Yeah, very well. And so this is what you want to do. And if you want to be a superstar for WWE, not everybody makes it. There's one chance in thousands that you might. 
but you yeah. might ha you might have the look. You might six, have the three size. And above. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six three and above. You got to be that and about two twenty five muscular, and you got to be can't be shy, can't be be afraid to speak up in the ring and speak up when you ask about wrestling schools, because a lot of the people call me and they'll say, and they won't even talk on the phone. Uh, yeah, uh, if I want to come to school. I'll be a wrestler. Uh -huh. And I'll ask them questions. They can't talk. And I say, if you can't talk to me on the phone, how are you going to talk in the ring? Yeah. You know, and then they'll call me from somewhere in Iowa, and I'll. Where's your school? I'm in Los Angeles, area code 818. You dialed it, right? And I'll say, uh, I don't know. I said, how do you not know what you dialed? And now you want to be a wrestler. you got to find your way to a match. When I was wrestling in Oregon, they were in Indian reservations. There were no ways to find it. You had to drive down certain roads and find it. So you got to be smart enough to figure out how to get there. So be smart GPS. enough. To, yeah, well, they didn't have that yeah. then. Oh, true. So you got to be smart enough to know when you're calling an area code where the city is, <laughs> that this is part of what your training is. Mm. And show up on time and do what it says because not everybody can be a wrestler. It's a lot of hard mm. work. And if you think you're going to get rich and make a fortune, you're not. No. Mick, Mick Foley <coughs> said it very well. I, I, I think he... He's put this in his book, um, Have a Nice Day. He said, now, nowadays, to, to make it in wrestling, you have to be either really good-looking yeah. or really ugly. That's right. Well, what, we, well, Same like, thing with acting. How do you think it was for us? <laughs> well, they use you as background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, enhancement, I guess, yeah. that doesn't count. Yeah, but I just wanted to get that out there because I do get a lot of calls, and people who watch us and watch wrestling are those that are curious, and no one really tells them. You know, I'll tell them on the phone what to do, but now that I can tell it. We've got a whole group out there I'm speaking to right now. Yeah, and with that shirt on, I mean, nobody's not going to listen to you with a no, shirt like that these, on. These skulls are all dead wrestlers. <laughs> 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 anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching SmackDown. We had a good show today. I enjoyed it. Um, uh, you can catch me at rickgrayson.com, rickscorner.com. I have some wrestling books, videos, and tapes that teach you how to do these things. And then where can we find you guys? Uh, well, uh, we're excited about the college football season. We'll be at the UCLA game on August 31st. And our first match back that we're, we're actually coming back is going to be September 14th. And that will be in Santa Maria, California for Vendetta Pro Wrestling. And then after that, it, it, it gets busy. So good. Bizarre. Bizarre. I'll be on the card with you. All right. All right, All right guys. Thank you. Stay tuned Come next in. week. Come again. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.